Hi, everyone. My name is Roy. I'm the CRWI lab technologist. Um, so currently, we're in the lab N235. Um, so all the program areas that are, uh, all, the lab, all the lab activities that are conducted here are by distillery students, wine students, brewery students, and food science students. Um, so there are a lot of equipment that are in this lab, uh, which I'll give you like an overview of. So let's get started. So first things first, uh, we have the anaerobic chamber here. So, the, so this is used by a majority of the brew students. Um, they use this in, like, in order to create and, and grow their starter cultures or any, any kind of micro uh, or organisms that are grown in one of these plates, which I'll give you an overview of. So usually what students tend to do is like a streak on this, on this um, uh, gro growth medium plates, and they place them in the anaerobic chamber, they seal it off, and then they turn to CO2 gas. This way, there's no oxygen present in this anaerobic chamber, and the microorganisms that do grow, uh, they're, they grow pr fairly well, like in uh, the absence of oxygen, hence why we have the CO2 chamber. So only carbon dioxide gas is being, being fed into this anaerobic chamber. Uh, they're, they're used to uh, start up beers, uh, so, so there are a wide variety of like, beers that, like, th that the students do tend to grow. So there are lagers, there's um, also just like regular yeast um, beers as well. So, so, so it all depends like what, what kind of beers like the students in, like, like intend on growing. So based on that, they use different kind of organisms. Um, but yeah, um, there's also the desiccators as well. Um, so even though there's, as you can see, there's a, f a, f a candle in here. Um, so once you start the candle up and you, and, and, and you place it in here, and basically what it does is it just burns off all the oxygen as well. I know it sounds similar to the anaerobic chamber, but what this does is it um, basically doesn't have any oxygen present in there, and there's also, um, it's just an easier way of, r rather than opening it and like sealing it, so it's just another way of doing things. As you can see here, um, there's an incubator, so basically the incubator is used to grow microorganisms. Um, typically, uh, students tend to put their plates and their cultures in here, and they tend to grow it for 24 to 48 hours. Um, ideally, at like 35 degrees or so is, is the optimal temperature. And this is the oven. So, so typically, the food science students use this to um, basically dry up any kind of like their samples, uh, like in order to grab like their target compounds from different kind of samples that they're working on in their experiments. So this is, used, this is a general lab oven. Uh, this is an in incubator, and this serves the same purpose as the one that I, that I described over there. Uh, there's also like different um, uh, buttons that you can adjust the, adjust the temperature. So currently it's at 20, 20 degrees Celsius, but it can go up to 100 to 120 degrees as well. So it all depends what you're using it for. As you can see a chart here, these are all the microorganisms that the brew students do use. And what we have here is a, is, is a muffle furnace. So it can range up to like 400 degrees Celsius. Uh, so like students, uh, like a food science students, is, like especially if they want to just get the dry elements of a, of a sample that they're gathering, they'll use a muffle furnace to evaporate and uh, distinguish any kind of uh, like moisture or materials that will evaporate. So hence why they just, they're just trying to gather like the dire compounds in the samples itself. So that's what they use it for. And this, this, this is the stomacher. So basically how, how this is used, as you can see, there's like two, two blades that keeps on uh, hitting the hitting the sample um, that's been placed in here. So like usually it's a homogeneous mixture. Um, so once like, the sample is being filled here, they just place it in here and it just keeps on rotating and just shakes it up for half a, roughly half an hour. It just um, uh, in, ensures that the sample that they place in here is like, is, like homogenized. And this is the centrifuge. Um, so this is the very expensive equipment. And one thing to remember with the centrifuge is to always have two different um, weights that are the same. The two different samples that are the same weight when they're balanced out. That way, for for example, if you do have uh, this 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 compartment here, which is five grams, but this compartment here is like one gram, it's going to topple over. So just like a washing machine, um, always have the weights evenly dis di distributed. Um, but yeah, th what this is what this typically does is if you have like a for example like a muddy water, if you put in the if you put in the centrifuge, it's going to uh, basically separate the soil element from, from the water element. So, so if you put like a typically, if, if, you, if, if you put a, um, a centrifuge tube in here, and, and, and if you have muddy water, you're gonna have two different layers. One's the soil, and, and, and the other part will be just, just strictly water. And this is the flow hood. Um, so basically, students do tend to work in here. As you can see, there's a light um, for any kind of like, um, if they're trying to work in like aseptic field, they would, they would work in here. 
Um, so, so, so there's a flow going on as well, which you can turn on by, by turning the fan on. So as you can see, the moment I turn the door open, like, 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 like there's a constant airflow. So basically what it does is it prevents any kind of air from getting um, into, those, in, 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 into the place that you're working in. So, so for example, if you're trying to, trying to streak a plate, um, in, this, in, the, in this laminar flow head, it's going to create an aseptic field for you. So any kind of uh, en en environmental factors that might affect it and, like, and, and, like, con and contaminate your microorganism plate that you're trying to grow, it won't happen due to the flow of air that's presented in the here. And this is the media fridge. Um, so as you can see here, um, there, there are plates uh, which, which, which hasn't been streaked yet. Um, let, me, let me just show you one after taking another package. So this is the MRS, uh, spike to cycle. So this is typically what our plates looks like. As you can see, there are no colonies growth. This is when you know this is a clean plate and it can be used. As you can see, the, the, the previous one, the, that was the MRS cycle, that was orange. Uh, this is the WLN. So it just shows that different kind of ingredients that, that's present in there, so it gives it a different color. Okay. So yeah, it just, it just also grows different microorganisms as a, like as well because they need different kind of nu nutrition. Hence why, as I, as I mentioned earlier, like on, this, like on the chart over there, uh, different organisms have different growth media that they use just so they can grow and they're viable. Uh, we also do have the brew program fridge. Um, so what the students tend to use these fridges and like freezers for is like it's like it's like growing up the microorganisms, starter cultures. So as you can see here, um, so the students have like have like streaked plates and they do have colonies growing on them already. Um, but yeah, this is typically what it looks like. This will start off here. So this is a texture analyzer. Um, so mainly what this is used for is in the food science program. Um, so basically they use this um, equipment to measure the texture of the uh, food products that they're testing. Like for example, bread, they will see how, uh, what the texture is through this uh, probe here. It will also give us a reading as well, how much, how, how resistant they are to pressure as well as uh, what's the max pressure like it can sustain. Like for example, cookie will obviously have like a higher uh, uh, pre pressure threshold as, as like opposed to bread. So, yeah, it, it just gives you like a reading of that as well. So what we have here, uh, I'll move on to the next equipment. This is, the, this is a color meter. So it gives you like a color reading of the compound that you're being tested. So like, for example, bananas or like, or like uh, red peppers or orange peppers. It just gives you like a reading of it. So this is the consistometer. Um, so basically what it does, it just gives you like a density reading. So density is the mass per, of the substance per unit volume. So it basically measures that um, based on uh, like, like the time it takes, like to like to reach an end point from the start point. Um, so yeah, this is this is basically what a consistent meter does. Um, so what we have here, so like the next equipment that we have here is a water activity meter. Um, so basically, what it does is just it just measures like the water present in like a food substance. So if you're like for example testing for cookies, uh, you just place it in like the sample uh, uh, cup over here. Uh, you just place it in there. And after a, like a couple seconds, it will just give you, or like a minute or so, it will just give you a reading of the moisture content present in um, like the food product that you're testing. So it just gives you, it just gives you an idea of like how perishable it is and like how prone it is to like um, spoilage, basically. And, and what this is 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 the moisture analyzer. So what it does is, on a, it has a typical, it's typically the same as the water activity here, but this actually measures moisture. Um, so so like for example. Like, let me just show you what the insides of it is. Um, so you just place your sample in this, in the sense compartment here. And like, once you place it here, it will just heat up. As you can see, there are heat coils here. It will just start heating up for like five minutes or so. And um, basically it will just see, uh, it will just give you like a reading of how much moisture is present in like a food product. And the other one that I'm giving here is the ebulliometer. Um, so basically what this is, is the ebulliometer. Um, so what it does is just, it just gives you like a, like the alcohol percentage, like in the, like, like in the sample, for example, wine. So this is used majority by the, by the wine students. Um, so as you can see here, uh, what this, how this works is by lining up the flame. Ensure that the matchstick is and once you place it in there, it will just heat up the sample that's present in there. And this thermometer here also gives you a, like a temperature reading as well. So ensure like, like it's at the boiling point. Um, so what it does is it just, it just compares like the boiling point of water to the boiling point of the sample that's present in there and it gives you alcohol uh, reading based on that. So, based, so after it's done boiling, um, you can just compare it with the chart over here and, and then you can d 
to determine the alcohol present in the sample that's being, being tested. And what we have here are the analytical balances. Um, so they typically go to three decimal places, um, as, a, as, a, as a opposed to the top loading balances, which are two decimal places. Uh, and this is the cold water bath. This is used by the wine students uh, for different projects. Um, they do, do a comparison of uh, different samples that they're doing in the cold temperatures as, as, as opposed to hot temperatures. Um, so hence why we have, have a cold bath. We also do have a hot bath as well, which uses a sous vide. Uh, but yes, yeah, these, these are typically used for different experiments. And the next equipment that we have here is a, is a viscosity meter. Um, so basically, this just, mes this just measures like the, like the viscousness of the sample that you're testing. Um, so as you can see, there's a probe that's, that's, a, that's attached here, and it just gives you, um, so, basic, so, so based on the resistance that's, that's accumulating, it will give, give you a reading of that. And what we have here is a stir station and a burette. Uh, so this is essentially used for titration. Um, so, it's used, so it's typically filled with uh, like a base. Um, and what's being, being tested against is an acid. So uh, it also has a phenylethylene indi indicator, which gives like an end, end point of um, when it reaches equilibrium. And as you can see, it's like rotating. So it's ensuring that the uh, base that's being dis dispensed into the acid um, here, it's, it's being um, dis distributed evenly. And, and once it reaches the end point, it's gonna give a, give a pink in indication that's, that's complete and set equilibrium. And what we have is, here is a turbidity meter. It just gives you like a, a reading of how turbid the water is. So it gives you like a digital uh, number of it. So, so how you do is so you, just, you just place a sample that you're being tested in here. And then, and then once you put it in the compartment, and sh it just gives you a reading after like five to 10 seconds later. So, so what we have here is a shaker table. Um, so, this, so students tend to use this to, to grow up their yeast cultures. So typically, like they do have different volumes from like 50 to like 100 mils. Um, so once like the like students grow up their yeast cultures here. So the, so the yeast cultures here, uh, students tend to grow like the yeast cultures like in order to uh, ferment their beers. So like for example, like the uh, malt or wheat or whatever compounds, like ingredients that they use to create their um, ex ex extract, like they use like the, uh, they, they use the yeast to ferment it and tend to create alcohol from it. So um, basically what students are trying to do is, is like the, to grow up the yeast cells to, to like maximize it and to, uh, just so that they will have enough in the propagators. So, so, from, so from like a one, one colony, which I've shown you in, like in the plates there, uh, they're gonna expand it to uh, basically like 1,000 1, liters. So, so like a liter or like, or like five liters or so, depending so on like, yes. Yeah, so, so like loggers tend to, tend to use more. Uh, as as as, a, as opposed to like other ales or other kind of beers, um, but um, yeah. So basically, what they're trying to do is just they just grow up their uh, cells. Like, like for example, like from one to one thousand. Basically, that the, that's what like the or like like the purpose of this is exactly yeah. Because like in the brewery, they 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 have the large propagators that are basically like the size of the ceilings, yeah. and they're trying to basically have like enough cells to ferment all the all the uh, extract that's there already. So hence. So, so that's the reason why they're growing up like the cultures here, hence uh, just so they can inoculate it and they can start growing like the medium there. So this is the propagator. Uh, this is mainly used by the brew students. Um, so as you can see, there's the in valve and there's the out valve. Um, so basically what this means is that the air flows in and the air flows out from there. Um, so in order to actually um, get into this propagator, you'll have to twitch the latch here, get it off. So, Typically what we do is we just have an aseptic field, like a fire going on. <laughs> so they just pour their yeast culture here. And once it's done, they just latch it on. And you just latch it on there. And it's good. And then we just aerate it out for at least 24 hours or 248 hours. And then yeah, just ferments it and just gives it an air and it, that's, that's when the yeast cultures actually start growing. Uh, yeah, they add, add the media as well, like the uh, wort. So they fill it up with wort, at, at least five liters, and then they add the culture. Um, and yeah, it just starts growing after that. Yeah, so like the finished product will be just a like yeast, yeast culture. So from, a, from, a, from 100 mils, it's gonna go up to five liters now. So, so this five liters is gonna be, yeah, so, so all the cells from here will be extracted and like put in the propagator that are in the brewery to, to grow big batches. Okay. All right, so what we have here is the cash still. Uh, this is used by the brew program and the, and the wine program. Um, and what you see what it does is the, the, the sample that you place in here, it'll just, um, so basically what it's used for is like VA analysis. Um, so basically whatever samples that you have in the inner chamber is gonna extract 
the, the compounds, and it's going to be placed in this flask here. And as I mentioned earlier regarding the titration unit, they'll be using that to determine the, the, the uh, amounts that's, that's present in there. Um, but yeah, as you can see, there's the compounds that are being extracted. And what exactly would it be extracted? Oh, so sample basically, sample. yeah, so it's basically the alcohol percentage, like the alcohol uh, present in the sample. So another thing that's uh, heavily used in this lab is the pH meters. Um, so, so the name explains for itself. Uh, this, this meter is used to measure like the pH of any kind of samples that you're testing. Um, so there are, diff there are three different um, buffers that are, that are used to uh, calibrate the pH meters. So there's the three, the seven, and the 10. Um, there's also pH meters that, that typically use the pH buffer four, seven, and 10. But ultimately, three buffers are needed to at least give like a proper reading of the pH value of whatever samples you're testing. So as you can see here, um, this is the probe. Um, so what you tend to do is just you just place this, place this thing. All this place here. So I'm just going to give you a reading of what's what's typically supposed to look like. As you can see, the reading is should should go up to seven because this is a pH seven buffer or close to there. <laughs> so so if there's a tolerance of like zero point zero two, but Typically, it is the same. So see, it's, it, it, it gives a, a pH value of seven. So it just shows that it's fairly accurate. So what this is is a, is a fume hood. Um, so there's an on switch here. And this is essentially used um, if you're dealing with caustic chemicals or any kind of chemicals that has a strong um, odor. Um, so basically, what it does is uh, it creates like a ventilation um, atmosphere, just so you're not ex exposed to the toxic fumes or any kind of uh, caustic uh, smells just so you're not as exposed to hazards that might be present. What kind of chemicals? Uh, so basically, any kind of strong acids, any kind of strong bases, uh, just, just uh, things that you don't want to smell, sensory chemicals, for example. Uh, if you don't want to expose yourself to that, it's, it's a really good idea to be working in a fume hood. Uh, that way, you're not in, inhaling any in, in kind of toxic fumes or any kind of things that might be hazardous to you. So let's give a brief intro introduction. Uh, so, so this is the autoclave. Uh, so any, in, in, in kind of labs that use uh, or uh, work with microorganisms, they'll, they are always should have an autoclave in their laboratory. Uh, this just ensures that all the microorganisms that, that they work with, uh, that they work with, are like, sterilized and they're and they and they killed off and they don't expose like a hazard to anyone else. Um, so basically, how how an autoclave works is that it like it uses pressure and it also uses steam to sterilize and, and kill any kind of uh, cultures or organisms that you uh, would like to sterilize and like so. And any kind of biohazardous waste, you would use an autoclave to sterilize and, and, and like neutralize it. All right, well, thanks for the tour. Uh, look forward to seeing you in the fall. My name is Roy, and goodbye.